Hey, it's ACAP. Today you're going to learn how to sync audio and video in Logic while avoiding the negative bar glitch. I'm going to start by changing Logic's starting time code to zero hours instead of one because my movie that I'm gonna use happens to start before one hour. So project settings and general synchronization and change that to zero. I'm going to leave this window open for now because we're gonna come back to it a bunch throughout this tutorial. You should have already set the frame rate when you created your project, but if you didn't, then you can always change it here before you drop in your video. So now I'm gonna drag in the video. You'll see that it locks to bars. So drag it in whatever bar you like. Don't worry about the time code yet. We'll figure that out later. And I'm gonna choose not to extract the audio track. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to watch out for when you choose not to extract the audio track is if this movie region is playing audio anyway. If it is, I'll show you how to mute it so that you can sync your video audio to it separately. In movie project settings, you can see that this video is not muted because it has a blue border around it. You click mute and the blue border disappears. Next, I'm gonna drag in the audio that goes with this movie. And because we dropped in the video at bar two, I'm gonna drag in the audio at bar two. Lock the time code of the audio and check this connect empty locked regions to movie. Now, for some reason, this bug that I'm about to show you only happens when you're using a separate audio file that you've extracted from the video previous to the creation of this logic session, and not when you extract the audio as you're dropping the video into logic. Now you may be thinking, why not just always work that way and extract the audio from logic every time you drop the movie into your project. Well, there are a couple good reasons why you shouldn't work that way. First of all, you might not even have a choice. This might be how you received your files. You could have gotten separate stems for dialogue, for sound effects, and for music. And to maintain that flexibility, you shouldn't just extract the audio directly from the movie. The other reason is for space concerns. When I started scoring short films, I used to score the entire movie in one project file, which meant that if I changed one tempo marking in the first queue, I would have to adjust everything that followed it. And I quickly realized that this was a really inefficient way to work. And I eventually decided to write each queue in a separate project file. One thing you're gonna to wanna to avoid when you're working like this is re-extracting the same audio file file over and over again when you drag your video file into each new queue project. That's just going to create multiple duplicates of the same audio file and will just take up space in your hard drive. So the way to avoid this is to just extract the audio once for that film and then put the video and the audio both in designated folders and just keep referencing those same folders for each next queue that you create. Now that the audio is synced to the movie, it's time to match Logic's time code with the time code that's in the film. Film. So I'm going to bring up the giant time display so it's easier for you to see. All you have to do is go to the beginning of the film, or if you already know your starting time code, you're going to have to manually enter that in movie project settings. Now we can decide the music start point. So let's say that you want the music to start on the first frame of the film. Just copy and paste logic's time code to synchronization project settings and you can have anything as your starting bar but for now i'm going to leave bar one just for sake of example so paste that time code into this box sometimes i have to press enter twice to make that catch and let's make sure that the sync is still on don't need the so metro. i just got back from milan yeah and the baked camembert with the turmeric. And it's easy to see that the audio is synced perfectly with the dialogue. Now let's say you changed your mind and you want the music to start actually when this guy randomly appears. So let's find the frame that he appears and copy this new time code into project synchronization settings. And let's check the sync again to make sure everything is in line. So I just got back from Milan. Yeah and the baked camembert with the- And as you can see, we have a problem. The audio stayed in the same spot, even though it's empty locked to the movie, but the movie did shift over to the spot that I told it to. So what happened here? The problem is Logic's negative bars. 
For some reason, you have a limited number of negative bars in logic, and in 4.4, it's only going to go to negative 8. This acts like a barrier for the audio, but the film can go as far past it as it wants. And so the movie went backwards, but the audio stayed exactly where it was because it was already at that limit. So I'm going to undo showing you these negative bars. And if I undo one more time, you would think that I would go back to where I was before with bar 1 at the first frame of the film. But that doesn't happen. Actually, it looks like you are more in a mess than you were before. Now, Logic's timecode no longer matches to the film, and the audio is still better than the vegan ciabatta from La Brea Bakery. Yeah out of sync. So before you start over from scratch, there actually is a way to recover from this position. You'll notice that the film is back at bar two, which is where I dropped it when we first started this tutorial. So just unlock this audio region, drag it out of its misery, and lock it back at bar two again. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to go back through the process of syncing the movie to Logic's timecode again, one more time. Let's pick that same sync point of that guy randomly appearing, and I'll show you my quick fix on how to avoid this problem from ever happening. Now, before you copy this timecode into synchronization project settings, just split the audio region and delete the beginning part of it. Now you can safely copy this into synchronization project settings. I found this on Craigslist. Had to scroll through a lot of porn shoots before getting this gig though and you're in sync again. Let's say you want some pre-roll. You want to hear the line that came before this one. Now you can safely use negative bars. So just pick as many as you need, unlock the audio region, and extend the audio to as far back as you need it to go. And don't forget to lock it again after you've extended it. Writer, director. Oh, so you're a waiter. And now you have some pre-roll. Even though you know how to use negative bars safely, if you want to always be in the clear, after you split your audio region, just set your music start point to something that's greater than one. That gives you a little bit of wiggle room. You never have to touch the negative bars and just extend the audio region back to bar one and that will be your pre-roll. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more tutorials, subscribe and make sure you hit the bell icon. Check the description for more info, leave a comment if you need clarification, and please share it if you think somebody else might find this useful. Until next time, stay tuned.